Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea, and welcome back to a high level best of five between Bly on Fire, also known as Bly, playing for Team Tuz GG, and Gumio here in the top left playing for Cloud9. So we're gonna have a little TVZ. Um, we, we recently got a huge freaking replay pack, absolutely massive, which got released by Intellect Stream Masters Katowice, which has not only all of the games from, from the Intellect Stream Masters Katowice, but it has some gems like these from the qualifiers for the Intellect Stream Masters Katowice. So these are slightly older games, but these are games that probably no one has really ever seen, um, which I think is really cool. And I was just going through that replay pack, and I saw Bly, and I saw Gumiho. Now, this was played on the European server, which means that Gumiho was playing this series with somewhere between 280 and 350 ping. And these matches are often very funny, because A, I think it's a little bit of a mismatch. Like, I, I honestly believe that if Gumiho and Bly were to play on a fair server, let's say, just both with zero ping, I think Gumiho in, in, a, in a best of 25 would freaking 13-0 Bly. Like, I, I, I don't think it would be very close. I think Gumiho is of a significantly higher level than his opponent here. However, this is not a fair situation at all. Bly here has way less ping than his opponent. And, you know, in a way that, that makes it a little bit more fair, or at least, we're, well, it makes it less fair, but it also makes the game much, much closer. As Bly, for the first time in a while, opens up with a hatchery on his own natural base and scouts exactly what his opponent is doing. So if you're Bly in this case and you see the timing here on the factory, as well as the timing on the command center, you should be capable of realizing that this was done off of a gas first, which means a faster factory, a reactor right away after the first Reaper, rather than first getting a Marine out, and then the factory, which is uh, what you'd usually end up doing here. Reaper pops in. Uh, Reaper is, of course, because of the gas first, delayed by about three seconds. That means that Bly needs a micro for a little less long before that queen is out. Against gas first, you shouldn't lose a single ling. If you do lose a ling, then uh, you get kicked out of the, uh, the Zerg Discord chat. I'm not sure if they have it. There used to be a massive Zerg Skype chat. Back when Skype was the, the prime method of communication for everyone. Now... Skype is only a prime method of communication for people like me who still hold on to the past. Like, oh, back in 2016, I won tournaments and I used Skype. <laughs> so, now I don't win tournaments, but maybe if I start using Skype again, I'll win once more. That's pretty much the thought process that I, that I have. As uh, Bly is attempting a Ling run by against a fully walled Gumiho, who just walked by these four Lings as well. And um, this is a pretty wild play out of Bly that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm not entirely sure what the goal was over here, but I appreciate the attempt nonetheless. It's like, oh, that's a wall. It's like he just scouted it as well. It's like, okay, that depot is up. I won't be capable of breaking this wall by just staring at it. Let me try anyway. So he loses four links pretty much for free. Goes into a quick lair as well as seven roaches. I'm not sure if the lair is a fake or what. I, I'm just not entirely sure what this is, to be honest. These roaches are going to get spotted. This is, once again, an absolutely incomprehensible build coming out of Bly. As this looks a lot like a Roach Rush. But at the same time, he also has a... Is this... What is this? I have no... I, I actually have no clue what this is. This is such a weird build. I mean, it's difficult to predict it. Because it makes no sense, but... It also doesn't look very strong. Are these defensive Roaches? Bly's <laughs> looking at his eco situation. He's like, I'm down two workers. My opponent's getting a third base. Well, at least I didn't die against the first two Hellions. So yeah, <laughs> pretty sure you could have just done it with Queen's body. But look, what am I to uh, to say here? Glyo reconstitution start. He has no freaking mineral mining. So this is I have okay. I actually I legitimately just have no clue what this is. Like the only thing that makes sense is that this is a continued roach all in. But then it starts with a roach poke, provoking a defensive response out of the Terran into more roaches i just don't quite understand what the entire purpose here is is of this mediocre push that hits at the five minute mark it's gonna snipe the reactor i mean that is something you see i think his plan is to hope that his opponent lags out of the game here um, but so far that isn't quite working out yet <laughs> kumio can micro because he has 300 ping <laughs> keeps getting hit by these roaches <laughs> this guy, no shame <laughs> Uh, it doesn't quite end up working though. I ended up killing 
I think just one cyclone. Okay, two cyclones went down, which shouldn't happen against slow roaches. <laughs> Had this been played on Korea, right now the game would be uber over. But even despite this being played on Europe, this already looks extremely good here for Gumio. <laughs> I love that Bly's game plan was. I hope that his ping is high enough that I can kill his cyclones with slow roaches. <laughs> <laughs> that is such an extremely based response of playing against someone with ping. Holy cow. He's a true competitor. Yeah, he does anything to win, man. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's no shame. <laughs> Throws on infestation pits. Like, how? What else is good? Right, fungals. Because you need the micro against that. It's gonna go <laughs> bile infester. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, we get the starports. Gonna start a reactor. There's a bunch of Cyclones defensively. We have one li one Liberator at least, right? I thought we had two. Did one die already? No. Okay, well, I just built a single lip then. Steam is going to get researched here as well. These barracks are finishing up. Not quite building their reactors or building marines. Kumiho starts floating a decent chunk of cash here. Tunneling Claw starts as well. At the same time, Burrow. Uh, Gumiho now s significantly outmining his opponent. going to go for a snipe here on the stim. We'll probably realize that there's legit no units defensively, as Gumiho had decided not to macro for a couple of hours. We'll see a spill of some roaches, I guess, into the natural. This is actually dealing some damage, which is more than I thought it would. For whatever reason, we don't have enough tanks. 16, 17 SEVs going down. 20 SEVs going down. As... Uh, Fly actually gets serious damage here. Some serious, serious damage output. <laughs> 25 workers dying. Now, 1-1 one, one is about to finish up. There are no upgrades here for Bly on fire whatsoever. Oh, there was three roaches. Did they kill something? Killed, I think, a couple of workers. Two, two, three kills. That's what, seven kills as well in the natural then. I was wondering, how, how can it happen that all of these workers are going down so quickly? Kumiho still not really macroing behind this. Look at this. He's, just, he's not building stuff. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. He's just intensely staring at his cyclones right now. And okay, now starts his next set of uh, next set of reactors. So there's an armory, tunneling claws. First two investors on the way out. Can borrow these investors, of course, as this is going to be the uh, uh, the supreme moment which Ply had been waiting for. To borrow all of his units. This Reaper scouts the third. He said, "Wait, so you have four four drones did see the fluorescent needles here though and immediately starts a turret at home yeah because he saw that this is going to be tunneling claws now this is fairly obvious yeah <laughs> i was gonna say you should be capable of realizing <laughs> the, the roach is on burrow there's still no tanks defensively as uh, gumio has a, a different way of dealing with things gonna need to scan once more <clears throat> will happen as a couple of workers will fall over here at the third base it is 57 workers to 47. Bly is taking a bit of an eco lead, although Gumio has now started construction on his fourth base. 13 more roaches on the way as well. That's a lot of scans here that are going down to take out these roaches. That's the third one. So Bly is going to need to walk out of scan range, snipe the turret. That means that these uh, roaches can stay here for just a, a tiny tad longer. Now trying to move in towards the third base. Yep, he's going to get scanned. And Gumio is just going to clean this all up. Still not a single tank in production, despite playing against a, a full Roach opponent. 60 drones. Triple Evo Chamber on 60 drones. I have never... This is... This is a wild game. Imagine that nothing survives of StarCraft 2 except this one replay. And like 200 years from now, scientists are going to judge how good players were at StarCraft 2. Like this was 13 years into the game's lifespan. The human of the early 2000s must have <laughs> must have not been very bright. <laughs> we have evolved a lot in the past 200 years to get to watch this game. <laughs> There's a unit called the Siege Tank, which deals extra damage against armored units. But he just isn't building them. <laughs> Despite only building roaches. This is unbelievable. Truly a marvel to behold. They've been playing for 13 years straight at this point. Like, write a paper. I, I At that point, probably just b b with the input of your brain. You don't have to type anymore. God. I hope we save a different... Like if, if we're ever going to get a time capsule of StarCraft 2 games, we're not putting this game in, that's for sure. <laughs> Maybe we should. <laughs> All right. Hive here is on the way, 10 minutes into the game, which is relatively quick, given how uh, whack the eco of Bly is. He is still on 60 drones. 
Uh, as he's... <laughs> I love that he went triple Evo. Now he's floating 2k resources. And he's not researching anything anymore. Yet. <laughs> this is truly a game. This, this, this has truly been a game. All right. Baits another scan here by borrowing that rose. That's actually a cool play. You know that? Just borrowing roaches at watchtowers and just baiting scans. I think that's very worthwhile. This army is relatively big as well. Um, so usually one of the funny things here is that... Please don't go in there. Please, Bly, let's not do this. All right. Bly's going to try his best. He's going to connect with well, a lot of banelings here. This fight went much better than I thought it would as he hits another fungal right into the ground. T2 finishes up right after this fight as well. Bly actually evening up the supply after being behind. What I was going to say is that usually we see these types of fights where people have even supply and then the, the Zerg is just up 20 drones. So army value is actually very even, which is is not that uncommon in this matchup. Although if you're playing Roaches, you probably want to slide slightly higher army, army supply. As we see... Uh, 111 upgrade still. Still a, a chunk of cash in the bank. Eight overlords here being constructed at once. Four finish up. Four more on the way. Six ravagers being built as well. Supply's gonna lose his first fourth base, but luckily he has a backup fourth, also known as the fifth, which is now going to be mined from. Oh. Nice observing that. Observing fitting of this game. As Hive has finished, Bly still floating 2k resources. Gumio also... Uh, some serious flotation over here. He will uh, not have to worry about drowning in a pool. Because holy crap, he has a lot of cash in the bank. This guy floats like mad. Road run by hitting the fort base. As uh, we had a three marine run by. And if you look at this situation, this feels like an impossible task. But Bly has come back from uh, worse. Has he? I'm not sure. It, Bly has played from worse positions. I'm not sure if he's won games from worse positions, but this is... Like, imagine Gumiho gets the lag spike of the century now. We technically have a game, man. Actually, how many banes do we have? 18 banes. Now, if these roaches come back... Oh, well, there's not that many anymore. Yeah, he needs to go now. Bly, that is, as he's gonna run through tank fire. Hits a fungal right on the tank, so they can't unseach quickly anymore. Will clear all of these siege tanks, but at the same time has lost 15 drones to these well split off units. As Gumiho is gonna take a massive lead here in the worker count. Has his 3 3 that's about to finish up, so he's gonna be fighting 1 2 units with 3 3 bio. Tanks are still being produced as well, so the first three ultras are now being produced too. They don't have chitin as plating yet. Um. As is, yeah, I, it's phenomenal that this game is still going on. Is this turret now is being attacked by a single roach. I actually like what Bly did here. Just poking his head in with a single roach saying, hey, is there a turret? Yes, there is. <laughs> so, you, so you can see what I'm doing. Confirmation, send all of them in. It's like, what? <laughs> Isn't the entire point of the scout is that the, if there's dangers that you don't go in. The Kakumio is just looking at these roaches like, what? <laughs> this, is, this is not a good idea. He's gonna, gonna get a scan as... Uh, I, I guess he unburrows here. It's gonna take out a, a, a couple of marines, but these marines are very well upgraded. Tanks are gonna show up. Liberators dealing damage as Gumiho with a massive supply lead at this point. Kitan is plating, plus 13 drones on the way. One more investor being added into the mix. Um, how many investors have we had total? Four? Three, three investors. This is a fourth investor. <clears throat> so far, these fights have been surprisingly good for Bly, given the fact that he's always been down at least two upgrades. Now, I don't see a lot of potential in this game. But... Actually, I don't think there's a bot here. I just don't, <laughs> don't see a lot of potential in this game anymore from Bly's side. If he hits a fungal... If he hits a fungal and the Ultras get to connect with this army... And you kill everything... Like this, for example... And then you counterattack... It's still gonna be rough, but that was... Not a great fight there for Gumio. Yes, he killed a base, but that's what? Minus 700 minerals of income? You lost probably more of that on the other side of the map. But at the same time, though, Gumio is mining so, so much. 24, 2500 minerals here. 
He's building a fifth base as well. It's a good setup with a lot of tanks. What are the upgrades for the tanks? Plus one vehicle weapons. More lips coming in as well. Uh, th this is really just a problem. The problem is that there are 10 tanks. And even if the tanks were by themselves, I think they would beat Bly's army every single time. Except there's also three lips, 42 marines, and five marauders with it. So that makes matters much, much harder. As uh, Liberators here are going to be harassing Overlord for a bit. Kumiho decides to move him forward and is uh, probably looking to pick up this game number one. Still up about three upgrades in all of these fights. I, I just don't really see a viable plan here for Bly to, to, to win a fight. And then even if he win were to win a fight, he's still behind. So there's really... You know, the, the, the victory requirements here for Bly are twofold. First, he needs to win a fight, and then Gumiho needs to lose a base or two. And his production all at the same time, because his production is on six barracks, two factory, which is simply too high for, for Bly to say, hey, if I win one fight, it's okay. Like, if Gumiho were on two barracks at this point, you could say well, maybe if he walks into a couple of bailing traps or a burrowed infester, we should be fine. I don't understand why these liberators are deciding to harass overlords rather than killing drones but this feels like a sign of disrespect coming out of Gumio here who's now gonna give up his left side although he still has some tanks and some marines that should actually be fine it's gonna push towards the far right I just don't really see a way for Blight to deal with this he's gonna try to move in here as a roach run by coming from the back ultras we'll get some connections with this bio force as the spore is attacking the liberator Fungal's hitting as well, and Bly is going to have to give up this... I mean, he's dead. He, he has been dead since since minute six. He's been hanging on there. Hanging in there, but I, this game has it's not been it so far. A couple of interesting fights, but at the end of the day, Bly with some major, major losses, of course, aided by the fact that he doesn't have any upgrades. He's gonna hit at least two tanks. No, there's one tank. And at this point, uh, I, I mean, I feel like Gumio is just as confused as I am right now. I was like, well, it's like this game is very over matey. Swarmos gets produced, because why not? It's obviously a misclick, but still. Tanks uh, leapfrogging forward, and this is... Yeah, this, this be good. He, he, can, he can probably fight without Stim at this point. Just walk in there and be fine. He's gonna Stim, and then it's gonna be even easier. I mean, there's no reason not to Stim. I was just saying that if he were not to, it still probably would be fine. Yeah, good pick up there. Uh, Gumio with surprisingly decent control here, despite the uh, pink circumstances. As this base is going to get taken out, GG gets called. And Gumio wins map number one in this already epic best of five. And that brings us to our second map, in which we have a, uh, once again, a low ground wall. I wonder if this is just the plan that Gumio has decided on. It's like saying, hey, I want a low ground wall. And I'm interested how a low ground wall works out against a proxy hatch because in a way you could say the low ground wall is much more vulnerable to a proxy hatch but often with a low ground wall you also have quicker tech i'm not actually aware it's like how does like a, a Turex reaper relate to what is this is he playing cc first oh he is oh, hatch first versus cc first he loves to see it how does a proxy hatch relate to like this type of play? I'm, I don't actually know. It's going to be a proxy hatch, or at least a drone scout, but probably a proxy hatch. As Bly uh, loves doing this type of stuff. Yeah, he actually wanted to hatch on his opponent's natural, but there is already a, a, a building there, so that's not quite going to work out. It's going to instead just drone harass the upcoming barracks. Barracks going to be built in the main base. Uh, Gumio is pooping himself right now, let me tell you. He's, he's absolutely pooping himself right now. Oh, this ain't fun. Okay, CC first gets scouted. What's the response out of Bly? Probably a rich gas, right? Yeah, that feels like a Bly move. Gonna indeed take a rich gas. Rich gas. I'm 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 smelling. Okay, I'm smelling a roach warren here. Like this is such a roach warren -y smell. If I've ever smelled a roach warren, then this is it. Oh my god, this smells like a roach warren. God, oh, what a massive roach warrant smell is, uh, is around here. Drone continues to scout. There's no low ground wall whatsoever to speak of. As if he's going to scout across the map as well. This guy's going to build the roach warrant. I can feel it. No? First queens? Oh, it makes sense, of course. It's a, it's a relatable play. 
this guy's gonna no okay no roach run i'm really surprised by this i i could have sworn that bly was gonna do everything in his power to make sure that this game doesn't go for longer than the than seven minutes or six minutes or whatever time this roach attack would hit it's gonna get the link speed instead oh there we go yeah okay i was i was gonna say this this feels so this feels so non bly esque yeah 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 Beautiful stuff. Okay, he's gonna catch this uh, SEV. Probably gets the kill on that as well, right? Yeah, he's definitely gonna get the kill on that. The factory is on the way. Reactor coming out as well. Then the question is, how many overlords do we need to build? Well, more than zero. At least three, I'd say. We need to build at least three overlords here to get a bunch of supply ready for these roaches. Then you can start warping in ravagers. Look at that income already here on 27 works. That's beautiful. That is absolutely phenomenal. Despite fighting against double mules, you're actually slightly outmining your opponent here, and you're definitely uh, having a good time with the gas as well, despite you know having less workers on there. So that's why this gold base is so powerful. It has everything. It has the gold, it has the rich extractor. Life is good being a gold base with a rich extractor. And that's all I can tell you for now. Six more roaches on the way. Or six more. The first six are on the way. As a starport gets constructed, building Hellions. Kumiho really likes to live on the edge. He's gonna scout with a single Hellion. I mean, the fact that I call the Rochal in like one minute and 30 seconds in should tell you that a hey, Kumiho knows as well that this is likely to happen. So this is this is not harassment with the cars. Yeah, this is just this is saying, hey, I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna scout. I'm just gonna. That's what I'm doing here. I'm scouting. That's nothing. I like. I know you're Rochal inning. I'm just gonna confirm it. Uh, it's now going to send this Hellion around, which is interesting. It's going to send all Hellions around, which is very interesting. It feels like a mistake. Yeah, it's going to turn back the moment he sees a, a decent chunk of links out here. Single bunker, as well as a Banshee. But this bunker is not quite finishing yet. He's going to try to cancel. It doesn't get the cancel on the bunker. As we're going to see a lot of SUVs here being pulled. Good hold position on those uh, on the boys here more and more link streaming in as well first banshee not quite out yet but the first two cyclones are out this bunker is going to survive but bly has a lot of supply there's a bunch of links moving across the map more ravagers being morphed in only six workers have gone down though as uh, this cyclone is gonna get hit no it won't banshee is now out and bly i think is is just in a world of trouble here is on triple basis but uh, he's not in a great spot it's floating a, a crap ton of money as well, given the fact that he's all inning at the moment. It's going to add two drones as well. It is a lair. It's lair attack. So this game is going to go on. I thought this game was going to end, but it won't. The game will go on. At least for a little bit longer. As uh, he gets his surround here on the Hellion as well as the Cyclone gets both of them down. And now we'll walk into the mineral line to try and deal some serious damage. Pokes in towards the main, sees a starport with a Banshee as well as Cloak building. And he'll know everything he needs to know. More links popping in over here. We'll take out that Marine. Go for the Cyclone. Yeah, solid move. Don't forget Gumiho still only on two bases. Despite having more workers than his opponent. Is he actually being outmined? He's being outmined a little bit, I think. Just because of the fact that there's a gold base here. But this gold is about to run dry. At least uh, two of these patches are not looking as healthy as they once were. Three of these patches are uh, are getting close to dying. Fourth base on the way here for Bly, who is still continuing to build roaches and ravagers. Double factory on the way for Gumiho. Decided after that adventure with Bio in the last game that perhaps that ain't it. Did he spot the roaches? Yes, of course he did. Gumiho, someone uh, without brain damage. Sees that and like, wait a second. Uh, looks like uh, something I can kill. And indeed it does. Two Banshees here having a very good time. As 13 more drones get produced for Bly. And after that, still only on 51 workers. Which just makes me happy to say. Tunneling Claws, Burrow, and 1-1. One, one. We've seen this before. Uh, namely in the previous game. And we're gonna have a... Uh, let's see. He's just gonna do the same thing. This time against Mech, though. I'm not so sure how good that's gonna be against Mech. You know? How good is that going to be against Mech? That's all I want to talk about. So against Banshee's roaches are very weak. Now this might come as a surprise to specifically Zerg players. 
but the roaches don't shoot up despite them having ranged attacks. I remember, I think I mentioned this before, when I first started playing StarCraft, I thought it was so stupid that there were ranged attacks that wouldn't shoot up. Maybe it, that was the, the case in Warcraft as well. I'm pretty sure I thought it was stupid in Warcraft too. I remember that I thought that the Marauder looked like a unit that could shoot up, and I was really confused when it didn't. When I first started playing StarCraft 2, I was confused by a lot of things, to be honest. A lot of things truly did confuse me. So we're gonna have some roaches here just kind of moving around. Having a good old blast. Equal weapon level 1. Equal plating level 1. And these four banshees as well. Look at them. Going ham. Absolutely going ham over here. Can you just snipe a spore? I think with four banshees, you like three volley a spore or something like that. Or with four banshees, you two shot a queen. I think that might be it. Or is that with five banshees? There is a number where you can start two shotting queens. It feels really good when you're a banshee player. Oh! This also feels really good if you're a cyclone player. Oh my god. Good lord. These roaches all are just going to get completely destroyed. <laughs> no road realize what was kicking up. <laughs> yeah, not for me. <laughs> I'm pissing up. Uh, this game feels extremely over once more, but Bly is gonna try to make some magic happen. I'm not sure how much magic he still can do. His, uh, his, his magic wand just got confiscated. The rabbit taken out of the hat. The aces up his sleeves all removed as well. So now he's gonna have to show us some new tricks, and I'm not sure how creative of a magician Bly really is as he's been caught with his pants down and that's not how you want to be caught usually so gonna see a burrow on the drones 19 have gone down already it, this game feels like it's about to end here a disappointing start here of this series although entertaining not the highest quality of games Get another fungal here on top of the cyclone. Kuniho takes a relatively easy win here. 77 SCVs against 47 workers. Gonna lose a couple of his, ba of his banshees, but is there even any anti-air remaining? If there are two queens against two banshees, um, I, this game is extremely over right now. I can't stress enough how over this game is. We have seven Mutalisk on the way, which would have been a great call if, if Gumiho was born on a farm uh, as a goat with 5 IQ, but Gumiho continued cyclone production. So these seven mutas are gonna do absolutely nothing. On top of that, there's turrets already in case the, the road run buys were gonna happen. So really, Bly on Fire created the counter for his next stack without really realizing it. This investor being burrowed here without energy is uh, something else as well, as um, I think Bly here is about to lose the game. And luckily for us, this is a best of five. This barracks is going to get a scout. He's going to be real disappointed by these turrets. Let me go ahead and See? What Bly wanted with these burrowed roaches was to force ravens. <laughs> Kumio doesn't even have the raven hotkey. Well, he didn't go for it. He's going to catch a couple of queens. These roaches going down as well. And that, my dear friends, will be the end of it all. I guess. <laughs> it's really just all it's gonna be. As 21 drones will fall at the same time, these mutas are well, actually getting some damage in the natural, but um, there are bigger problems here for Bly. GG gets caught as Lumiho puts himself on match point. As we see uh, an instant switch up here coming out of Bly, as one of his first drones is being sent across the map, and this is going to be a classic Bly. It's a 14 hatch, I think is what it is. I freaking love this build. And this is actually what I wanted to see. Against these low ground walls, I have seen no, no Zergs whatsoever play these, these 14 hatches. And it feels like it should be really good. Because one of the problems with the 14 hatch is that you can't really rel reliably get high ground vision. Like it's, it's not that easy. But here, you don't need high ground vision because well, the stuff is happening on the low ground, you know? And I'm specifically curious about a 2 Rex opener. So I'd love for Gumiho to go for a Turex. He's not going for a Turex opener. He's playing late gas triple marine start. This is a fairly good build that focuses heavily on economy, which is the one thing he won't need in this game. You basically get a 10 second faster command center. That's it. And you have the ability to snipe an overlord early on with three marines. 
So this is an 18 gas. This is a this is a build that Gumiho actually invented. This is a, a Gumiho exclusive. Although some people have started playing it, so it's not really exclusive anymore. But he released it as a Gumiho exclusive. Whoa, that's crazy. That's what the people said back then. I recall it. I think he built one extra SCV here as well. It's, it's, it's like a pretty wild build. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. No, he doesn't go for it. Okay, just the orbital. Okay. Then you get it like five seconds faster. This command center on the low ground. And you have the ability to clear an overlord. So really, it's a cool build, but um, we're going to have to wait and see how it's going to perform against the classic Bly Proxy 14 hatch. I think the most logical response here is going to be to... First of all, start by flaming your opponent. Call him a little loser. They can only cheese. But Gumiho is... Uh, he is a much better tournament player than I am. Rather than immediately going to the flaming, he's first going to try to start a bunker, which is probably the correct order here. Gets a tech lab, wanting to get marauders out. Something I truly do appreciate as well. Did this uh, SCV scout the fact, yeah, that it is a roach horn? There's going to be three roaches here, finishing at, uh, what, 235. Marauder's not going to be out yet. Factory gets built on the high ground. I think, now... This could be just my personal, but what do you want? He's gonna pull all of his workers? Okay, just downstairs, so he can mine from down there. So this is a very important moment, because this bunker needs to survive. If this bunker survives... I mean... It actually doesn't look that bad. What the what's he doing? <laughs> He's a little... <laughs> Going around for a little bit. It's going to try to clear some of these roaches. He pulls the boys. Uh, he's going to get one Ravager down here. This feels very risky as he loses his first two units. He's going to keep the second Ravager alive as well. Uh, that's a lot of less D a lot less DPS than I think Gumio would have liked to keep. He's going to move these SCVs in a weird way. He's going to perhaps lose a couple more. This bunker is going to fall. And with that bunker falling... So do his chances to win this game... As uh, Bly takes game number three, puts himself back into the series. Next map is going to be Alcyone. As Bly opens up with... It's not going to be a proxy hatch. It's going to be a, a hatch on the Rich Vespine Geyser. That's all it is. It's still... Oh, maybe it is a proxy hatch. He moved across the map. Or he had a... He, he set up a camera hold key over here. <laughs> that's a... <laughs> okay, that's going to take his opponents, of course. I'm not sure why I thought this was going to be a macro game. Honestly, I thought he was going to take the gold base, but Bly has better plans. Um, I Gumio, also the first time, by the way, he decided not to go for a low ground wall. Did open up with a gas first, so he's going to have a really quick factory. I bet he's going to scout as well. Watching Bly play is a treat. There's something just beautiful about a guy that doesn't really care about the conventions, about the rules of StarCraft 2. He makes his own rules, and he really has his own little, like his own little rule book of things that he wants to play by. You know, he's. This is one of the things is that people believe that these, you know, the the the, the dedicated cheesers, the committed cheesers, the Mio Micas, the Blys, the Hasses of the world, that they completely play something random or different every single game. But they actually have, they have a playbook. It just looks very different. You know, everything in there is written in Comic Sans. It just. It is a different type of layout as well. There's no order. Uh, but they do have a, a you know a, a playbook. It's not like they make up stuff. No, then they, they have transitions out of it, as we've seen. We see you see very similar games coming out of these players very often. That doesn't make it any less impressive, but it's still something to keep in mind. Is that it's not just guys throwing something at the wall and seeing what sticks. No, they have they have a plan. The plan just looks different from what we're used to. As <laughs> I like that Gumios. Scouting pattern is first checking his own gold base and then <laughs> just checking. Around. He's not even gonna go across the map because he knows that there's something dumb happening here. He's like, I know what you're doing. Well, I don't know what you're doing, but I know that you're doing something. Um, so I'm just gonna sit here. I'm just gonna wait. We have a rich Vespine guy on the way. This, by the way, would be, get completely shut down just by this Reaper kind of showing up over here for a little bit. You can have a Reaper on the high ground as well. Maybe Bly is only going to mine from the rich Vespine geyser. That is a possibility. He's definitely going to all-in. Because it's obvious to me and to you guys that this is not viable to play a macro game from, right? Like, yes, it's nice that you have to... He could rush Mutas. 
If he rushes Muras, oh my, he's actually getting a lair. That lair is gonna get scouted. Then he sees that it's one base. Hasn't checked the gold yet. Should probably go for this rich Vespine geyser. So if I'm Gumio here, I go to this rich Vespine geyser base. Then I check the gold. Okay, yeah, he does both of those things. No, he doesn't yet. He has no clue what's kicking up. He's like, okay, wait. None of these patches have been mined. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's pissing himself. <laughs> he's afraid of Nidus. <laughs> One base Nidus. He has no clue. He has no clue as to what is happening. He's forgetting to scout the rich Vespin guys are based. Now I think, wait a second. Isn't there a base there somewhere? That has some type of property as we get an attempt at the assassination here. One of these Hellions is going to get taken out. Successful assassination here. Spire indeed is going to be the... Uh, the, the tech of choice here, as a bunker gets produced as well, spires in the main base, as every single car is most likely gonna fall. Eh, that last one? Is it too gonna fall? Might just barely stay alive, and now it's gonna sacrifice its life for the Dominion. Getting no information. And actually, in a way, Bly has forced out the, the best response possible for him. There are no extra barracks. What? Ooh, it's gonna be mech. There are no extra barracks. There's no third base. And he has insane gas mining. Look at this. It's gonna be capable of going for the fastest possible Muta rush. Moving out here with six marines and a tank is kind of a wild thing to do. There's a Banshee, which is useless as well. Cyclones are going to be great, of course, against the Mutalis, because we have a Bailing Nest being thrown down here. Mind game wise, this worked perfectly for Bly. The question now is, is this build any good? You have a Ling drop heading in towards the main base, while simultaneously also five Mutas in production. That could be more, but I think we're lacking Larva. No. What are we, why are we not building more? Okay, yeah, it's gonna go up to eight. As an Overseer at home to deal with the Banshee that is now here. So Bly really is ready for, I don't wanna say for everything, but he's ready for a lot of things at least. Four turrets on the way. Don't forget, this is still two base for Gumiho. Gumiho is officially being well, out expanded. Not out mined yet, because he's up seven workers. So these links should wait a little bit. And what you wanna do here is you probably wanna bait out some cyclones. As that Banshee is forced. What is this? Is it a raven? You have Hurricane Thrusters, 30 CC. Here go the links. No, here go the links. So he's expecting turrets. And then what you want to do is you want to snipe that turret. I think that's the plan here. He's going to go for the turret. We have a quick repair here by these SCVs. Links not quite getting the damage in. It's only two workers end up falling. And Muta goes down. This went absolutely awful here for Bly. Loses eight links. Kills only three SCVs. At the same time, we have world's worst move out coming out of Gumio here. He says, life has been fun for me. But now it's time to end as he moves on to creep with six marines, no stim, no combat, as well as five cyclones just by themselves. Mutas are trying to work on some of these cyclones. We have nine mutas, 25 links with 14 more on the way. This is going to be a very close fight. It, it really is. And Gumio is putting a lot of eggs into this basket that looks kind of flimsy. This is not a well woven basket. I know everything about uh, massive basket weaver. Um, ooh, Cyclones are just going to get targeted down. These links probably need to move a bit towards the top side to not get hit by the tank anymore. That's not what he's doing. He's going to lose a bunch of links here extra for no real reason. Cyclones do get taken out, though. It's eight Mutas against three Cyclones. It is 30 workers, however, against 51 drones. S Bly right now in a position where he probably wants to pretend that he isn't all inning, but really he's all inning very hard right now. I think the third base should have been on the gold, by the way. So you kind of have this mixture of lots of gas with little drones and lots of minerals with little drones. Maybe you can do something there. As uh, three more factories are being produced, we're going to see a leapfrogging turret uh, maneuver here coming out of Gumiho's. The bailing speed has finished. He's going to try to get connections with anything gets connections with, well, a bunch of SCVs. 
but really without any purpose. Here comes the bailing flank, trying to move in towards the natural. Oh, good distraction. Cyclones do spot it, though. One more Cyclone, one Banshee come out. And that means that these Banes don't get the connections they want. At the same time, though, Bly into the main base is not going to get the snipe on the turret. That was darn close. As um, the momentum of Bly is, 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 yeah, is, is ending here, it feels like this has been it. It feels to me like this has been it for Bly. We have how many Muralisk? We have eight Muras. Three more on the way. We have how many links? We have zero links. Ten more on the way. As uh, the Cyclone count has grown to a number that is so large right now that I don't think it is very realistic for us to expect another good fight coming out of Bly ever. Um, the production on the side of Gumio is large enough to not expect anything good uh, you know, when, when it comes to taking a, a bad fight for Blind and quickly reinforcing, that's not happening either because he's just getting outproduced. He has less eco. So, I feel like, uh, I could be wrong about this, but I feel like Gumio is really far ahead. And I think Gumio believes that too. He's going to move out here with a couple of these Cyclones with Hurricane Thrusters. 13 Cyclones against 20 Links and 11 Muras. And I'm having difficulty seeing how in the world Ply is going to deal with this. He'll need to get his links over here. He's going to lose a bunch of drones before that happens. This CC is going to fall as well. We have an 8-link drop heading in towards the main base. As Bly comes in with a run by towards the third. But units are going to be in position to deal with that. The only scary thing here is the main base. But even that... Like, he could lose 20 workers and still be ahead. He could lose 40 workers and... Yeah, actually, if he loses 35 work, If he loses 40 workers, I still think he's ahead. I actually believe that. And there's no way that this link drop kills 40 workers. Unless he gets hit on the head. But even then, I think the reinforcement might just kill the links before they get to the natural. So even if Gumiho gets hit on the head right now and passes out for the next 25 sec or yeah, next 30 seconds or so, I still think he'll be fine. I like the fact that this is a bailing attack rather than a ling attack. It's gonna get him more more workers. I think it's a good call. See how fast the response is here out of Gumiho? Reasonably quick, honestly. That's really not a bad response. As it's only going to lose 11 workers. Overlord still stuck in the main. Muta count is continuing to grow. We're at 17 against 22 Cyclones. Problem is, is that the Cyclones scale much better. So, yeah, make it that what you will. But that doesn't look so nice. Command center uh, about to finish up. That's the fourth base. For, for Gumiho, while Bly right now is only on three. Bly's going to try to make a move here in towards the natural of his opponent. At the same time, Gumiho also moving out with Cyclone. At this point, Gumiho can split his army in half and win with both halves against everything that Bly has. I feel like that Gumiho might have realized that too. He's playing it a little bit careful. And right, he gets a big scam forward. Like, well, that looked like a crap army over there. I'm just going to kill this base without any serious issues. That's... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see a way either for these Cyclones to, to die. Unless he just stands into the, the, the bailing range, but that seems unlikely. More Cyclones still moving across the map. Muras try to dive on top of this. As the Banelings are uh, trying to move in as well, but they're not going to get any of the big connections that they need. The next wave of Cyclones arrives. And that is most likely going to be all she wrote, as there's no Banes remaining. The Cyclone count is too high, the Muta count is too low. And there's just no, no alternative units here. This got... Pretty close. I feel like if Bly keeps some extra of those links alive here against that weird push out that Gumiho did, he doesn't walk right into the tanks. Maybe there's something there. If he targets SEVs a bit more than trying to right-click turret, maybe there's something there. But that's not what happened. And instead, Gumiho gets the 3-1 victory in an, uh, an interesting show. Uh, it was it was fun. It was entertaining. And uh, I'm glad I watched it. I hope you guys are glad you watched it as well. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see all of you next time for a new video.